Listen, I don't ever want to be in the business of defending the NCAA. Like, it's a horrible, corrupt, just god-awful organization. So never, ever do I want to sit here and say, like, you know what? Like, actually, when you think of it from their perspective, I, I never want to be that guy. But I think the NCAA is right in the James Madison Tarleton State, Jacksonville State waiver situation that everybody hates. And I know that that sucks. James Madison is 10 and 0. James Madison should be ranked in the top 25. James Madison should be right there banging on the door of being the group of five representative in the New Year's Six and should be able to play in their conference championship game, play in a bowl game, all of those things. I agree. But I think the rule that the NCAA has in place for those transitioning from FCS to FBS or in college basketball and every other sport from Division II to Division I is actually a good rule. Where if you're transitioning, you got like a four-year period there where you're not eligible for the tournament. You're not eligible for postseason play. You're not eligible for your conference championships, whatever the case may be. I think it's a good rule. And basically the spirit of the rule and the purpose of the rule is so if you put together a really good team in division two, you don't make the jump to division one just because you've got a really good team for the next two to three years. It's a transition rule. So you are prepared. You are making a smart, wise decision. You're financially ready. You are scholarshiply ready. <laughs> I don't know if that, that's, I mean, it's definitely not a word, scholarshiply. You're scholarshiply ready. You're academically ready. You're all of those things. You're ready facility wise. It's not just a rush of like, hey, we're pretty good. Let's join to like, you got to just some division two school somehow gets a bunch of five stars that are going to be sophomores in college basketball. And be like, you know what? We should move to division one. It's to deter that. And I think that's a smart rule to have. Now, I don't, think that there is anybody that's out there just dying to jump from division two to division one or FCS to FBS because they feel like they got a short term window to be really good at this and they can capitalize on it and all of those things. But I think it's a good rule to have. And maybe more importantly, it's the rule that James Madison and Jacksonville state and Tarleton state all agreed to. So while I agree that it sucks and that the NCAA looks bad for not allowing those waivers. What are they supposed to do? Like when you transitioned from FCS to FBS or in Tarleton state case from division two to FCS, like you made the agreement of like, we will abide by these rules when we make our transition. Like that's just how it like that. That's what you agreed to. And, and that makes a lot of sense to why the NCAA put that in place. Now, your argument could be like, well, yeah, they had to agree to that. Otherwise, they weren't going to be able to move to <laughs> Division One. Like, your options are agreed. Like, it's basically like, kind of like a shotgun wedding, so to speak. Like, there really isn't another option. You, there's no haggling over, like, we want to follow these rules, but not these rules. I get it. I understand that the end goal for everybody Every college in America would like to be Division One. They can say that, oh, we love the amateurism and the really student-athlete qualities that, that are present in Division Three. They want the hundreds of millions of dollars in TV money and donations and ticket sales and all of those things that come with the association of being in Division One program. Everybody wants it. Anybody saying they don't is lying through their teeth. So you agree to what you have to agree to. And, and I don't like I don't like that. I don't like the you agreed what you agreed to. And now that things are going really well for you, you're like, well, hold on. This is poll crap. Yeah, it is. Is it unfair to one specific recruiting class that has four years of like, hey, you're never going to get to play in the Duke's mayonnaise bowl. Sorry. Like, yes, that sucks. But it's also the price of admission to being a part of a super elite select group of universities and colleges in America. 
So if that's the price you got to pay of like, oh, you know what? They went 12 and 0, but they weren't allowed to do anything with it. Does it suck from a strictly a football perspective? Yes. But from a 10,000 foot view, uh, from an administrative perspective, I think the spirit of the rule is a good one. And, and I think being really good and then trying to alter, like apply for that waiver kind of plays into the whole purpose of the rule of like the NCAA saying like the reason this exists is so you're not great and then try to jump up. And the only reason you're doing it is because you think you're going to be specifically great for these two years and then be like the temple owls from the early 2000s and late 90s. We don't want to see that happen in the sports largest in uh, not largest sports, most important, biggest, grandiose division. And so I don't have an issue with that. When you apply for that waiver, when you are 10 and 0, it plays into the thing that the NCAA created the rule for the thing that they feared was you moving up because you are really great. So you're going to come in and, and really it also kind of protects the group of five schools that are already established in FBS football. Does it look great that James Madison can barge in and be at the level that they are right now? Doesn't look great for everybody else in the Sun Belt, does it? Uh, not necessarily. Like some of these schools have been doing this at the Division One level for a while. James Madison joined a few years ago, and now they're already eclipsing what you could have possibly accomplished. Not a great look. So it protects the schools that are already established while also ensuring that the schools that are coming in and trying to crash the party have their bleep together. And I don't think you can argue against it being a good thing that schools moving from one division to another should have their bleep together. Like that, that is a wise, that is a wise thing to expect from somebody. So I don't think that's, it, it's unfair or outrageous or whatever the case may be. Like a lot of other people do. Does it suck unequivocally? Yes. They have earned the right to play in those games. They have earned the right to play in the Sun Belt Conference Championship game and play in a bowl game and earn the right to be ranked in the college football playoff rankings if those if that group believes that they should be one of the top 25 teams in the country. They've 100% earned that. But rules are rules, and when you say, I will agree and agree to and abide by these rules, I don't think you then get to turn those aside when you are good. And they have to apply for the waiver. They have to attempt the, like, hey, don't know if you noticed, but we're pretty good. Like, you, you have to do that. But I don't, and, I, and I'm not saying that they're throwing a hissy fit or anything like that. But you don't get to then throw a hissy fit if things don't go your way. If you say, hey, it sure would be great if you would let us in. And then they say, well, actually, you remember this paper that you signed that said you, you weren't going to do this? You don't get to be like, well, that's not fair. Yeah, that's it is. It is fair because everybody's playing under the same rules. It's making the move that you are making. So strictly from a football perspective, does it suck? Yeah, it does. James Madison is fun and entertaining and exciting and the best thing that could possibly happen for the Sun Belt and college football really as a whole is for them to lose their final two games. And like, we forget about this story and it's not the first time it's come up you know, like Bellarmine in college basketball. It's a division two school that moved up to division one in Louisville um, in the Atlantic sun conference, I believe, and won their conference tournament their first year, which should have got them an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Well, guess what? It didn't because they're not eligible for the tournament. I think it's a harsh penalty to pay to move from Division Two to Division One or from FCS to FBS. It gets sucks. But if that's the price of admission, you bite the bullet and you deal with it. And I'm not saying James Madison isn't dealing with it. It's more of a like the reaction to like this isn't fair. It is fair though. 
because that's the rules that they agreed to follow. That was part of the ticket price was you're not going to be eligible for this for a while. And your options are either stay in FCS, continue to be one of the dominant programs, or you bite the bullet for a couple of years and move to FBS. That's the path they chose. And that's kind of one of those, like, that's the bed you made. Sleep in it. And I don't, I don't think the NCAA is outrageous for not undoing that. Again, I don't want to sit here and defend the NCAA. I think there are very few instances in which you could defend the NCAA. But on this one, I think they got it right. Even in the face of being right sucks. I think they got it right. That'll do it for today's episode of the Daily Huddle, another short one. We're back at it on Sunday. Got the Sunday stock report, Heisman Trophy update. Looking forward to a big week of college football. I think there could be some, like, we're, we're still waiting for that chaos Saturday where teams start a tumbling. I don't know that it's this week, but it'll be entertaining when it does happen. So I'm looking forward to it. Hope you are, too. If you're watching it here on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're getting all the great college football content we're pumping out here on Saturday. Glory, if you're listening on the podcast, drop a five-star review. It goes a long way in helping out the channel and getting us in front of more college football fans. Back at it on Sunday. I'll see you then here on the Daily Huddle with Saturday Glory.